the deadly coronavirus. Chinese leaders say things are getting better, but should you believe them? Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Shelley Zhang, filling in today for Chris Chappell, who has been temporarily taken down by YouTube. Well, I've got some good news and some bad news about the coronavirus disease that started in China, called COVID-19. First, the good news. The head of the World Health Organization said this week that their team in China has made a range of findings about COVID-19, including this. They found that the epidemic peaked and plateaued between the 23rd of January and the 2nd of February and has been declining steadily since then. What a relief. The WHO says the epidemic peaked in China three weeks ago, and now it's been declining. And if you want to verify that, just read Chinese state-run media, which just cites the WHO again, creating a perfect, harmonious circle of information that is definitely both believable and trustworthy. Let's see how things are on the ground this week, like in Beijing. Well, that is pretty light traffic for rush hour. And all these shops seem to be closed. What's going on? Our company has less than 100 employees, and now we only have around 10 people working in the office. That does not sound good. Well, unless he hates his coworkers, then it's pretty great. Look, we've all been there. Now I think it's time for the bad news. The bad news is, when Chinese state-run media and the WHO say that coronavirus cases are on the decline, that is a lie. Hmm. Did you hear that? That was the sound of this episode being demonetized by YouTube. I hope you watched our recent also demonetized episode about how corruption in the WHO helped the coronavirus spread. If you did, you know that you should not trust the WHO, because while their top executives are gallivanting around the world in first class, the division responsible for handling the coronavirus outbreak is so chronically underfunded, it has repeatedly been found to pose a severe and unacceptable level of hazard. That certainly hasn't stopped the WHO from partnering with China and taking China's money which is another reason that you shouldn't trust what the WHO says about how the Chinese Communist Party has handled the coronavirus. Look how close they are. Wait, don't get that close. There's a coronavirus spreading. Wash your hands, Wang Yi. Meanwhile, Chinese leaders are encouraging Chinese people to return to work because they don't want the economy disrupted. But Chinese leaders themselves have canceled their hugely important two sessions meeting because the fight against the coronavirus is actually intensifying. Yes, everything is fine and the masses have nothing to worry about. Go make the economy strong. But the Chinese government is going to call in sick just in case. Look, nobody actually likes the two sessions, which is an annual meeting of the National People's Congress, or the NPC, and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, the CPPCC. Mostly, it's an excuse for the attendees to get in a good nap. Unless you're Yao Ming, he can't exactly blend in. But you know who's really glad that the meetings have been postponed? The tea ladies. Ugh, so gross. Postponing the two sessions is a political blow and a loss of face. But Chinese leaders don't want hundreds of party delegates from all those possibly disease-ridden provinces coming to Beijing next month, thank you very much. This is called setting the right example. It's like how, as the masses deal with a severe shortage of face masks, Chinese leaders set the right example. Seriously though, when it comes to the coronavirus, don't look at what Chinese leaders say. Look at what they do. So the WHO is corrupt, and the unholy alliance between the WHO and the Chinese Communist Party could also be leading to, at best, mixed messages, and at worst, dangerous lies. So take their advice with a grain of salt and a handful of Purell. What do you think? Leave your comments below. And before I go, it's time for me to answer a question from one of our contributors on Patreon. Episodes like this one usually get demonetized by YouTube, so we rely on viewer support to keep the show going. 
And as a reward, we answer some of our contributors' questions at the end of some episodes. So today's question comes from Coraline Algae. Do you think it would be beneficial for President Trump to take a hard stance against the WHO? Perhaps something similar to the hard stance he took against NATO early in his presidency? Well, that's a big question. The WHO is definitely corrupt. But how much can the U.S. really do about it? The WHO is a United Nations organization. No single nation can control it, and that's by design. That's a good thing when it's running cleanly, but it doesn't seem so good when U.S. taxpayers are forking over half a billion dollars a year to a corrupt, ineffective, and wasteful organization. But this isn't just an issue for Trump. Leaders from both major political parties should unite behind this issue and publicly criticize the WHO for corruption. Beyond that, the U.S. could consider reducing its funding for the WHO or putting conditions on it, like what Trump did with NATO. But the WHO is the only major international health organization. So while it's hard to live with, it's also hard to live without. It's a lot more complicated than NATO, so there are no easy answers here. Thanks for your question, Coraline. And thank you for watching. Go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored and contribute a dollar or more per episode to help us keep making episodes like this one. Once again, I'm Shelley Zhang, filling in for Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.